Hi guys, welcome back to the second video on our tutorial series on Apache Cassandra. So in this video, we're going to talk about the CAP theorem, which is a pretty central theorem for distributed applications and distributed databases. And we're going to particularly look at how that applies to Apache Cassandra. So CAP theorem, also known as Brewer's theorem after Eric Brewer, who coined the theorem in 1998, relates to the properties that a distributed database or system can have. So we can see here why it's called CAP is because the three attributes that a distributed system can have are consistent or consistency, available, availability, or partition tolerant. So the theorem states that at any one time, a system can only have two of these things. You cannot have three. So that's in this Venn diagram, we can see that there's no three point overlap. So that means a distributed database like Cassandra cannot be consistent cannot be available and cannot be partition tolerant at the same time. So you guys might be wondering, what do these three terms mean in the context of a distributed database? So we'll have a brief look at each one of them and tell you what these attributes actually mean. So we'll start with consistent. So a consistent database, the formal definition is that every node always returns the same most recently written data. So a node here being a server on our database system, and remember Apache Cassandra, is a database that is across multiple computers or servers. So in this case, consistency means the most recently written data is always returned. So that means that if we at some stage decide to change John's car in our database to be a Mercedes, when we go later to check the data and say, what car does John drive? All the nodes on the system should return that he is a Mercedes. In the case of a non-consistent database, one of the nodes might still return old data that he has a BMW, in which case we would not be a consistent database. And that might happen because it might take some time for the data to replicate to all the nodes in our cluster. And that is basically the concept of consistency in the CAP theorem. So next we have available or the availability of the database. So the formal definition of this is every non-failing node returns a response to any read or write request in a reasonable period of time. So this means that if we want to get or give data to our database, we should always be able to do that. The database should always be available to give us the data we want or allow us to write the data to the database that we want. So if we want to change John's car to now be a Subaru. We should be able to always make that. We should always be able to say John's car is now a Subaru or from the read perspective, we should always be able to query and find out what type of car John is driving. And finally, we have partition tolerance. So this means that the system will continue to function even during a network partition or failure. So a network partition occurs when some of the nodes can't talk to each other. So one node might not be able to communicate with another node or one group of nodes, nodes again being computers or servers on our system, might not be able to communicate with another group. So that's a network partition. So based off the CAP theorem or Brewer's theorem, we can only have two of these attributes. So we can be available and consistent. We can be consistent and partition tolerant, or we can be partition tolerant and available. We can't be all three at once. So this makes an interesting choice for the database developer. How do we want our database to perform? Do we always want the data to be available? Do we always want the database to be consistent? Or do we always want the system to operate properly when there's a network failure or network partition. In most distributed systems, network partitions will always occur. If you looked at the Apple cluster we saw from the first tutorial of 75,000 nodes, obviously some of those nodes are going to fail from time to time. So partition tolerance is something that in most distributed systems we have to have. So the choice really boils down to, do we want our data to be always consistent or do we want our data to be always available? So we'll look at where Cassandra fits in the CAP theorems. And here we have a triangle that represents what we had in the previous image. So we have the consistency down here, the availability here, and the partition tolerance here. And we can see where different databases fit in on that scale. On the availability and consistency side, we can see the traditionally non-distributed database. So something like a relational database like MySQL or PostgreSQL sit firmly on the always available always consistent, but not partition tolerance, aka not distributed. And then we have databases 
that take a more consistent approach to data, while not always available. So stuff like Apache HBase, Redis, and MongoDB will take that approach. Cassandra sits on the other side of things. Cassandra goes for more availability over consistency. And that sits along with databases like RIAC, and I actually can't remember what this database here is, but there are numerous other databases that will fit on that side of the triangle. So Cassandra sits on this side of the database where it's focusing on availability. But that doesn't mean that Cassandra has bad consistency. The consistency is still at a very good level. Depending on how you set up your cluster, you can achieve pretty good consistency and always available. And that's reflected in Brewer's revision of the CAP theorem in 2012, which says you can have a lot of availability and a lot of consistency. It doesn't always have to be completely one and none of the other. It can be a bit of both. And Cassandra lets you achieve that through several of its features. In particular, when you're reading and writing data, you can choose what consistency level you want. And we'll have a look at that later. And you can set the replication factor of your cluster, which is how much nodes your data is replicated to. And again, we'll have a look at that in future tutorials. So that was the CAP theorem, pretty central idea and it's only good to get a grasp of. So thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it or leave a comment if you have something to say. Also subscribe to the channel. In the next video, we'll start looking at how to set up a Cassandra instance on a single machine for both Windows and Linux.